What's Going On Seville was made possible through donations and services provided by Lighthouse Studio, Hollywood Theatre Lab, Roxy Daisy, Silver Lining Blood Drive, on Seville. I'm Lana Young. Have you ever thought about giving blood and then chickened out at the last minute? Did you know that every two seconds someone needs blood? Or that just one pint of blood could save the lives of three people? Would knowing this information make a difference in your decision? 17% of non-donors cite just didn't think about it as their reason for not giving. 15% say, I'm just too busy. What's your reason? Tonight's guests, Lee Silver, blood donor advocate and activist, and Marley Faust from the Virginia Blood Services, will tell us how together we can help to save the lives of literally millions of people. One day, you just might need your life saving. But later on in the episode, you want to stay tuned for the dulcet tones of Carl Anderson, our musical guest of the night. He is delish. But first, let's meet Lucy, who is alive today because of the generous donations of registered blood donors. Stay tuned. I've had Crohn's disease since the age of eight, uh, which has uh, forced me to be a very lucky recipient um, from the donor system for many years. Um, I've had to have 40 surgeries because of my Crohn's disease. And with each surgery, we really had to prepare ahead of time for blood, especially as the surgeries progressed. Because over time, if you, um, I had developed many um, different antigens and antibodies in my blood that required very rare uh, characteristics that made it very difficult to match. And um, in a particular surgery I was coming up against about three years ago, my surgeon said, you're going to need 20 units this time, which was pretty overwhelming to find 20 units of such a rare um, blood type. First of all, it was O negative, which really wipes out half of your donors. Um, and I also had antibody restrictions and antigen restrictions that uh, really made it difficult. And a friend of mine uh, was talking to her sister about it, and she said, we're going to get this done. And we, I just said, look, you know, this is going to be really difficult. We're going to have to manage with what we, what we can. And she said, no, we're going to get this done. And she reached out to the school community. Uh, and people came and stepped up to the plate that had never once met me, didn't know my two daughters or my son. And just because somebody needed help, they stepped up to the plate. And when I spoke to the donor uh, services people that were going to be the ones that would help us orchestrate it and, and take the blood. They asked how many people we were reaching out to and the numbers to me seemed huge but they came back to me and said this is just statistically impossible with the rare uh, qualities we have to find in, this, in these units. It's going to be, it just can't happen. It, it'll be a miracle if it happens. And I went back to the friend that was orchestrating this because I felt horrible. I said, you know, I just don't want you to go through all this and, and waste your time and, and put all these people out. And she said, no, we're going to do this. And we were on a really, really tight, I'm talking two weeks, time frame. And she called, reached out to these people, and hundreds of people came. Uh, that uh, Parents. And then I was getting word that students were coming. I mean, young teenagers. Teenagers were being turned away because they were just a little bit too young. Uh, and the really neat part about it was when they got to the service to, to donate their blood, um, they would find out that they weren't a match, but they gave anyway, which was just unbelievable. That you know, they were saving lives every time someone stepped into that door. They were saving another life. I've been tapping into this system for a very long time. Um, since the age of eight. So I have a lot of people out there to thank that I don't know. Um, you change people's lives, not, not just that person, but my children have a mom still. 
which is huge. Welcome back. We have Lee Silver and Marley House Faust in the house, which is what I was going to say in the first place. See, you gave me that rhyming, and now I used it incorrectly. Faust, Marley Faust from Virginia Blood Services. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank now, you. we just saw a video of Lucy who, you know, talks about how grateful she is for blood donors and that, it, you know, that service has kept her alive all these years. And it was a very touching video. Um, Lee, you're a, a huge activist, um, advocate for blood donation. Tell me how that came about. Well, it's a bit of a sad story, but my... Um my wife was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia um, May of 2009. And at the time she was diagnosed, they told us that she was gonna need, and, and, and it scared us, uh, 150 to 200 transfusions during her treatment. And- um, Did you, you even know what that meant at that point? Well, I had a pretty good idea. It meant she was gonna need blood. I didn't know what type of blood. I didn't know who could give. I didn't know um, anything about platelets or anything of that nature. Um, and and I, I don't think I really had any sort of uh, real grasp of how much 150 units was and how, how, you know, how big a deal it was um, to receive blood. Right. So you got a pretty quick education <laughs> on that, I'm sure. Yeah, we, we got a pretty good, big uh, and quick education on lots of things medically related, but um, as far as the blood part of it, um, it started almost immediately the day she was diagnosed, she needed blood. She didn't have um, any platelets, literally. Um, the standard for uh, a normal healthy person is 150 to 450 um, platelets, and she had 10, and so she immediately wow. needed to be transfused. Wow. Was there, was there a, ever a lack of blood? Did she always get what she needed? Well, we had treatment in three different places. Um, my wife was fortunate enough to um, be a candidate for a transplant, two transplants in fact. Um, we were treated with chemotherapy here at the University of Virginia um, and then at Duke University for a transplant and MD Anderson in Houston. And when we were in Houston, there was an, unfortunately a, um, an ice storm. Um, Houston's a tropical place. Um, MD Anderson is a huge facility, does many, many transplants, and they, they have to buy their blood um, in addition to what they're able to raise right there in Houston. And during this ice storm, they weren't able to get the flights oh, no. in, and there was no blood. And she was in the hospital. Um, according to her standard protocol, she needed a transfusion of platelets and they told us no. And I had been giving platelets. I unfortunately was not a match for her, so my platelets were going to somebody else, and we were receiving other people's platelets, but there just weren't enough. So the only people at that point who got a, a platelet transfusion were people who were actually bleeding at the time or were at a critical, critical um, you know, juncture in their treatment. So no, we were actually denied blood at that point. Oh, wow. Every other time, um, and, and you, it's, it's really amazing how you're, you, you feel about medicine, blood, oxygen. When you're in a hospital, you just expect it to be there. Yes, You absolutely. just expect it to be there. Um, and we were very fortunate. Every, every place other than this one, it was about a three-day period. It was very, very uh, scary. Um, and, you know, there was just nothing we could do about it. And that's it. the reality. That's reality. W which leads me to my next question about the silver lining blood drive that you've organized. So you became a, a, a quick advocate and activist after your, your wife passed in her name, correct? Yeah. Well, it, it started when she was first diagnosed. Um, it was never really about raising blood for her. Um, she felt just terrible about, you know, consuming so much of a precious resource. And some of our friends um, over at World Strides did a blood drive and they named it the Silver Lining Blood Drive in mm -hmm. her honor. They didn't even tell us about it. We had no idea. We were at the beginning of our treatment and they just did it. And wow. it was just a wonderful, wonderful um, reaction from the community. It was a great name that just resonated mm -hmm. with everybody. And um, we decided, wow, you know, this was a way to help everybody and her. And it helped her in that she felt better about using up such a valuable and, and limited uh, resource. That, that's fantastic, and I'm gonna bounce around a little bit because you just said your friends did a blood drive. 
Now, Marley, people can sponsor their own blood drives, right? Absolutely. With, and is that with the help of the Virginia Blood Services? It, can you talk a little bit about it that? It is, and we were talking about this earlier. It takes 400 donations every single day to meet the needs of patients right here in our community, just in the state of Virginia. And about 50% of that comes from our fixed sites or our donor centers, which we have one right here in Charlottesville. And the other 50%, we rely on local businesses and organizations and groups like um, Mr. Silver's here to hold those blood drives, um, asking members of the community to give back to patients in need. It just feels like it must be a constant struggle, a constant push to get that much blood every single day. It can be, it is, and, and fortunately we have members of the community who are very giving and willing to hold these blood drives, and Lee mentioned the time around uh, when you were in Texas with the snowstorm, the ice storm. That happens here in Virginia uh, around the holidays when we have bad weather, the same for the summertime, so we're so lucky that you're holding this drive coming up on the 21st going into the summertime. That's really when we need to bulk up the units just in case there are circumstances um, regarding the weather, donors going on vacation, um, Got to take like all that, that to consideration. Can, right. So back to the silver lining blood drive that's coming up. Um, you are doing this in, in conjunction with the Virginia Blood Services. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that we have a student uh, that has done a little video that we're going to show uh, right after this interview with the details. But I'd like to hear a little bit more about St. Anne's involvement as well. Yeah. Um, my wife was a, a, a community leader within the St. Saint, Saint Anne's um, school, and she was always volunteering. And so it was really natural that when we wanted to hold our first blood drives um, after the initial one at World Strides, um, that we involve the school. They have the facilities. We also have a lot of infrastructure, websites, things like that that can help get the word out. Right. Plus, an incredible community of people and students who want to help. And that's one of the things you find when you have a friend or a relative or someone who, who gets ill, is everybody wants to help, but mm -hmm. unless you're an oncologist or you happen to own a hospital, what, what, can you, what can you do? What can you do? And you can fluff pillows and you can give rides and you can do make all kinds of make food, all kinds of things. And everything was really appreciated. But the one thing almost everybody can do, or at least try to do, um, that is such a huge help is give blood. You will help somebody if you can give blood. And um, it was interesting, you used a, a, the term a minute ago, you said bulk up the, the supply, but the one thing people have to understand is you can't store blood for a length of time. It, it's a perishable commodity. So we could do a blood drive and raise thousands and thousands of units, and next week we would still need blood mm -hmm. because blood only lasts for a short period. It just makes me feel tired mm -hmm. thinking about that push. Well, it shouldn't make you feel tired. It should make you feel like you want to go out. I'm going to, but that's what I blood. mean. Like it makes me want to do something. Like it because you can get, you can register as a blood donor, right? And and give it regularly. Absolutely. And, and so maybe that would take that feeling of you got to keep pulling people in if people are registered to do it, right? Yes. Um, how how does one register to to become a, a regular blood donor? Well, you? you can go to our website, which is VA Blood org and you can search your zip code to find a location that's close and convenient to you and it's very simple the big three are make sure you're 16 years or older weigh 110 pounds or more and that you're feeling a good health so it's a good time to weigh more than 110 pounds then it is okay I'm there yeah, I qualify as well <laughs> no um, so uh, we talked about St. Anne's and I would like to know a few more statistics Marley um, your website is full of, of wonderful statistics, but are there any myths that need busting that might be stopping people from coming to give? I think a good one right now is seasonal allergies. We all get allergies. Makes you feel down, probably makes you feel like you're not so healthy <laughs> at the time. And a lot of people think because they're feeling bad because of allergies that they can't donate blood. I just mentioned the big three being 16 or older, 110 pounds or more right. and feeling good health. And that's not the case. As long as you bring in a list of any medications that you may be taking for those allergies, you're still okay to give blood. And your blood gets tested too, right? It does. It goes through 13 different tests, including your blood type. So if you're giving blood for the first time, you can find out what your blood type is. And then we go through all the infectious disease tests to make sure that it is safe and that it is reliable for the hospitals that we serve. And in turn, you get to know if you're doing okay as right. well. Right. Absolutely. Um, I'm interested to know about a couple of the programs that you guys have. One has to do with sickle cell. 
Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we, uh, we are always out in the community trying to educate not only about um, the types of donors that we need, but also the types of patients that we serve. So a lot of people think that um, there's accidents, and so there's a need for blood because someone's in a traumatic accident. They don't think about the cancer patients that are requiring the platelets. They don't think about sickle cell anemia, um, which required donations every single day from our local hospitals, especially right here at UVA with the program that we have here. So um, that's just an education program that we have, and I could go on all day oh, <laughs> about it, but I welcome, um, please visit our, our website to um, learn more to about learn that more program. About that. Yes. And then you also have a, a rewards program. Yes, and that's that a great is idea. to encourage blood donors to come back. You can come back every 56 days to donate whole blood, and you can actually come back every two weeks to donate platelets. And so to encourage our donors to come back, we have this, um, I'll call it an online store, which is um, VBS great. Donor Rewards, and it's to reward donors who come back and give. You can accumulate points, and there's anything from coffee mugs to uh, VBS polo shirts on the website. So lots of fun stuff for donors to show uh, that they support our organization and to also raise talking points when they're out there in the community with these items so they can um, help raise awareness. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Any other um, ways to donate other than whole blood? Is it red cell? You, you mentioned platelets. Um, what, are, what are other? Yeah, uh, those are the big two. The, the whole blood is um, about a 15 minute process with the needle in your arm takes up to 15 minutes. Okay. Platelet donations take a little bit longer. It's on an automated machine and those donations usually take place in our centers. I know for, for some of Lee's drives, we've come out and brought the platelet machines before, uh, which we do have the capabilities of doing. Uh, when you donate platelets, it goes into an automated machine and, and I'll try to dumb it down as best as I can, <laughs> um, but it spins off your red blood cells and your plasma and gives it back to you and we just take your platelets. Oh, wow. And a lot of people say that they actually feel better after doing that. It doesn't drain them as much. Uh, we amazing. use the products immediately. Mm -hmm. Those only last for five days, if you can believe it. F platelets can only stay on the shelves that long, so we're turning them around very quickly. I, I give platelets generally, and um, my platelet count has actually gone up. Really? So, yeah, they keep taking platelets, and my body is revved up reacting. to produce. It's reacting. Mm -hmm. And so my platelet count has actually gone up, and the time it takes me to give platelets has gone down. Wow. And then every 56 days, you can give your platelets and your red cells all at one time. And they also will take plasma. I usually go in and ask what's, what's in the most need, and that's what I like to give. And sometimes they've said plasma. Sometimes mm -hmm. they've said platelets, um, double platelets. You can give double reds. It's a bonanza. It is a bonanza, and you get a treat afterwards. And you feel great about mm -hmm. giving. I mean, giving makes, you know, it, you, you are a little tired afterwards. You can be a little tired. They, they encourage you to drink a lot, um, and that makes you feel much better. Water, but I'm assuming. Water, yes. <laughs> um, and <laughs> we have snacks, to clarify that for and our And snacks, viewers. which they provide. Um, and, but I always just feel better about doing something great for someone else. Yeah, I, it's that's, the quickest, uh, most affordable way to be um, altruistic. Ab absolutely, and you're saving so many lives. There's yes. how many millions of people that need blood transfusions? Like millions, right? Millions every year. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I'm coming, Lee. Um, <laughs> What, what is your goal for the Silver Lining Blood Drive? What do you hope to see? Well, it's not what I hope to see. This particular blood drive is being run by the students. Great. So the students are getting an opportunity to not only do something great for the community and great for someone in need, but also they're learning how to organize, um, advertise, and do all kinds of things um, related to the blood drive. I think the goal is 56 uh, donors and 40 units, which would be a nice donation for a day. That is a, I think that's a very doable goal. And the reason why I said 56 donors but only 40 units is yeah. some people are just not going to be able to give. Their, their iron's going to be low, mm -hmm. and they're going to test you for that. Right. And that's a good thing to find out that your iron's low mm -hmm. so you can do something right. about it. And some people won't weigh enough, and you know, or some people may be excluded because of some of the other criteria. They, are, um, they do have a set of criteria, which I think is on the website. Mm -hmm. And that's to ensure that we have a great blood supply out there. We don't want to give blood to a patient um, that's not uh, good for that patient. So they do a great job of screening the blood. 
Well, thank you so much for educating us. Uh, that's been really eye-opening for me, and I, I really am going to register, and I hope to see you at the Silver Lining Blood Drive. And thank you so much for all the work that you're doing, my, Lee. It's my uh, pleasure. It's really amazing, thank you. your dedication. Yeah. <laughs> and Marley, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and see us here. Thank you for having me. Up next, we're going to see a short video from Peter Hartwig, who is a student at St. Anne's, and he's going to tell us all about the Silver Lining Blood Drive. So stay tuned for that. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Peter Hartwig, and I'm a senior at St. Anne's Belfield School. The upper school students are organizing a blood drive in honor of Becky Silver, the mother of two students at St. Anne's, and a beloved member of our community who lost her battle with leukemia in May of 2011. Silver Lining Blood Drives began in the summer of 2009, and the next one will be on Monday, May 21st, at the St. Anne's Belfield Upper School Student Activity Center. If you're 16 years or older, you're eligible to give blood. Please be one of the 56 donors who will help us reach our goal of 40 units. Remember, someone's life depends on you. Carl Anderson, everyone. Woo! I have fallen on hard times Stumbled but I'm trying To get back any way I can but the only thing I know Is feeling absolutely low Just another broken hearted man well, the world it seems to be Especially cruel to me Dealing me the coldest of hands One thing will remain true I will always love you Just another broken hearted man times that I've crumbled, all the tears that I've cried, I have fallen on hard times, stumbled but I'm trying to get back any way I can. Feeling absolutely low Just another broken hearted man Just another broken hearted man Carl Anderson, everyone. Woo! What a voice. Thank you so much. You are so sweet sounding and you make it Effortless. Thank you. How long have you known you could sing? I've been singing all my life. My, out of the womb? Out of the womb. My, my father was a folk singer and my mother as well. They actually met in the coffee house in Richmond okay. um, singing tender folk ballads. So I've been around that sort of thing all my life, singing all my life as well. It, well, uh, you, you chose the right path. You grace us with the dulcet tones of Carl Anderson. It's my only marketable skill. No. I, I promise you. You're funny too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Now, it's no mistake or no accident that iTunes picked you for their singer-songwriter indie list, right? They did. Playlist in January? They did. It was so exciting. I look for any sort of thing like that um, in uh, the formative um, years of a, a folk career. It's, it, it, really, it's the place to be. It's a step forward. Absolutely. That's right. yeah. And that was for your new album, Wolf Town, Wolf right? Wolf Town, indeed. And which song was it that was um, It was a song called Don't Stop Trying, which is actually the first track oh, off yes, of that Oh, yes, I record. love that song. Thank That's you so brilliant. Much. That's wonderful. So tell our viewers where they can find you, um, any social media websites where they sure. can see concert dates, etc. Well, I'll tell you what. I am on Facebook. I have a personal page as well as a music page. I'm also on um, Spotify and Amazon, and uh, I also have my own website, more importantly, which is www.carlandersonmusic.com, and there you can find 
some videos and news and uh, tour dates, um, which really is uh, is the most important thing is to uh, come to a show and, and yeah, see check it live. you out. It's really amazing to watch him live. It's it's awesome. So I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for Thank coming, you so Carl. Much for you rock. Me. And good luck with any future albums that you Thanks make. A lot. And thank you all for watching our last episode of What's Going On Seville. Um, we here at What's Going On Seville and the people at Lighthouse Studio want to thank you for watching and also for supporting kids making television. Now, I really would love for you to go out and give blood on May 21st. I'm going to be there giving blood for the first time, so I hope to see you there. Uh, we will see you in September. Carl, will you take us out? Absolutely. Thank you. Spread the good word. Yeah.